In this video, we're going to look at the basics of creating a project in Flash. And we'll start by looking at the, the different options here. Now, the different options are there with you know, different ideas in mind. If you're creating something that needs to be interactive, then um, you're looking at using HTML5 Canvas if it's going on the web, uh, or you're looking at ActionScript 3, Air, and, and so on. Um, if you're creating something in Flash entirely with animation in mind, you don't really have to pay attention to which one of these you uh, choose in terms of the interactivity. What I do recommend if you're just doing animation is selecting ActionScript 3 only because that gives you the most uh, drawing options available. So things like different strokes, um, those are going to be available in ActionScript 3 and they won't with HTML5 Canvas. Uh, so just click on that and you'll get a new Canvas. Uh, the next thing I'm going to recommend you change is the workspace. Right now it's in Essentials, and right now we're using Animate for animation. So I, what I'm going to recommend is changing it from Essentials to Animator. Animator will give you your color swatches, your alignment tools, your publish settings over here, and your toolbar across here. If you want, you can go in and change the location of any of these things just by clicking on them and then dragging them around. And uh, if you, so if you want, for example, your toolbar over here, I don't know why you would, but if you did, um, I am a creature of habit. So I like my toolbar to be where it is in every other program on the side here, like that. Uh, so you can go in and make whatever changes you want. Here I'm not quite seeing my, no, maybe this is a little bit too wide. That looks better. And if you want to go in and make changes like that, you can. You can um, save this as a new workspace. And that will be available for you whenever you go back. I'm just going to go to the default animator space for now. So here, um, I'm going to resize my stage. In Flash, this is known as the stage, so that it fits in the window. Um, actually, maybe I'll make it 100%, uh, so it's just slightly smaller. And before I do anything else, I'm going to go in and check my frames per second. So these are under properties. This is the properties panel, and it shows you the properties of whatever is selected. In this case, we don't have any objects, nothing in our Flash movie. So what we do have over here are the basic movie properties. So 24 frames per second, that works fine for me. And now the size. This is size with the idea that, that it's going to be web content in mind. Just keep in mind that you're going to customize this based on what you're doing. I am just going to pretend I'm creating content for use in a video. So I'm going to make it uh, 1280 by 720. That would also be fine if I was creating content I wanted to use as a um, you know, a standalone animation as well. Uh, now here, I want to point out there's a scale to content option. That is great if what you're doing is scaling up or down using um, the same frame aspect ratio. So we can scale from uh, 1280 by 720 to um, 1920 by 1080 or vice versa without any uh, blank spots. But if we are um, scaling from 4.3 to 16.9, for example, then you're going to have little gaps or other issues. So here I, I've changed this. I'm going to make this, I want to see the edges. So I'm going to make this 75%. And well, actually now it's on 50. 50 is probably giving me the kind of best view of the complete stage, maybe. So 50, yeah, it's showing me everything. Now, the only thing I would warn you against in terms of scaling down, this is just the view, it's not the actual size. Make sure um, when you, you're you adding text that you have it scaled at 100% so you have a good idea of the size of the text. I'm going to save this. Um, I'm just going to call this 
actually, rather than flash one, I will call it animate zero one because this is now animate, not flash. And you'll notice here it's giving me a .fla file. .fla files are the working files, and when you're done the animation, then you want to export as either, you know, um, a movie file, maybe an animated GIF, maybe a still image, but this is not what you would use to view the finished one. This is the file in progress. Okay, so here I'm just going to kind of go over some of the basic drawing tools. Uh, but first we'll start with the timeline. Uh, so the timeline, again, has layers. We see layers in almost all the programs we use that, that have a timeline. And this is pretty much the same. So whatever's on top in terms of the layer order will be on top in terms of the video. So if this was going to be the bottom layer, I might put my background on there. And because in Flash you don't get a little thumbnail that shows you what's on the layer, you really have to go in and name your, your layers accordingly. The timeline is also different from a lot of other programs we use in that it's broken into frames automatically rather than into um, time code. So here, um, with 24 frames per second, if we had like a two-second animation, it would end at frame 48. And again here, um, by default, uh, what you have to remember in Flash is that you start with one frame, and if you want more than one frame, you have to create it. What we'll start with, it, we'll just leave it at one frame for now, but we'll start by creating the background. Now um, here, you can go in and if you just want to change the background color to something simple like another solid color, say maybe you want it black or green or red, you can just go in here and change the stage color. If you want to create something that is uh, maybe a little bit more complicated in terms of the color, maybe something with a little bit of a gradient. Uh, let, let's say I'm just going to build a landscape here, so I want to do a basic uh, background. And here, one thing I will recommend is don't try to draw anything too complicated in Flash. Flash is a program where you can do draw, you can draw, but for anything more complicated, you really want to bring in that um, those that kind of content from other programs. So if you want a really kind of rich, detailed uh, landscape, most of the time you're not going to create it in Flash, you're going to create it in Photoshop. Uh, what we can do in Flash is very simple. Uh, Flash works very well with gradients. So if we want to create, say, a gradient background, we could do that by, again, since we can't do it directly on the stage background, do it by first creating an, an object. So in this case, it would be a rectangle. I want to point out, as soon as I click on the rectangle tool, it changes my properties over here in the properties um, option. So I can see I have no outline, no stroke, and I have a blue fill color. Um, if I wanted to add a stroke, I don't because it's my background. I would click here and pick a stroke color. What I do want is a gradient. So I would go over here to the color panel, and by default, it's going to be a solid color. I could change it to a gradient by clicking here on either linear gradient or radial gradient. Or I could click here and pick one of the default mixes of, of gradients. I'm just going to, um, let's say I want a, uh, a linear gradient, so I'm just going to go here. and. It's using the default starter colors, which are black and white. If I click here, I can change, you know, just the, the kind of pattern. I'm just going to go in and start with the basics. So I could change the colors if I want before I draw the gradient. Uh, just click here and then go up here and, and choose your color. So I'm going to do something that goes from, I'm going to do a something that goes from a sky color to a background green. So over here I'm going to click and it's going to be my ground. I want a little bit of variation in between. So maybe I'll do click here and I'll create another swatch. 
And this one's going to be blue, but maybe a lighter blue, more of a, be more of a teal. Okay, so that's a lighter blue. And I'm going to do maybe, maybe this one I'll leave at a green, and this one I'll do a darker green. So I have more of a, a change. Maybe that's too dark. We'll lighten that up a little bit, but still leave it dark. Okay, so now when I go in and create my rectangle, it's going to go from uh, across from left to right. So this is something I have to change when I edit my background swatch here. Double click on it and you'll notice when you select something in flash it has this little dotted screen all over it. Drawing in flash isn't necessarily the easiest thing. It's good for simple things but again you don't want to do anything too complicated here. So this is selected and what I want to do is go in and edit the gradient, but first I want to make sure that this is exactly the width and height of my stage. So 1280 by 720. But now it doesn't line up quite the way I want it to. There's a little bit of empty space there. So here I'm going to go to my Align panel, click Align to Stage, and just kind of center that on the stage. Okay, perfect. So I now have the background. It's not The color's not going the way I want. So um, just to kind of briefly go over this, the first tool is a selection tool. You click on, on an object and it's selected and you can see it's selected with these little kind of dots here. Now Flash is a little bit odd in that you can go in and you can just kind of reshape an object by grabbing it with this first selection tool and just kind of moving the shape around. So you can kind of smidge it into place. Now, um, if I had an, a, an outline around that, that would also be the case. The second selection tool here, if you use that, and I'll just drag around my shape to select it, it gives you anchor points to work with. So right now they're all selected, so if I was to move it, I would move everything. Now only one point is selected, so I could go in and reshape my um, my shape from uh, you know a rectangle into a triangle very easily. So that's one thing to remember. So this one, uh, you can use it to select and move a shape as a whole. You can use it to just kind of reshape a shape. And sometimes, you know, the, the way these tools work, they don't always work exactly the way you want. So sometimes it's easy to reshape something. And sometimes when you go in and select it, especially if there's a lot going on, then you find uh, all you're doing is kind of selecting and moving it around. This one, um, the sub-selection tool, you can also drag around an entire object and select it. But um, what you're usually using that for is to kind of reshape something by using the anchor points. Now you can also go in and with the first selection tool you could just select half an object and then separate it. So that can be good if what you want to do is go in and say I want a number of little kind of boxes based on that gradient but I want them to be separate. You could do that. It's not necessarily the best way to work but you could do it. Uh, you could also go in and use this lasso tool to just kind of freehand draw a shape that will be selected and then you can move it around. There is also here the polygon tool so if I wanted to create a triangle sometimes the easiest way is just to this will create um, a triangular selection. When you double click you join the ends and now I can move that triangle around. You'll notice what happens is that this creates a, a big hole where I originally moved it from. I'm just going to undo that. The other selection tool is the magic wand. And that's not going to really work here because we have a gradient rather than a solid color. But if that's how it works. You know, if you click on one solid color, it's going to select that. Uh, so back to basic tools again. So here, I've got this. It's just a, you know, basically a filled rectangle. It's going to be my complete background. 
and I want it to go from blue to green to be my kind of background color. So there's a free transform tool. I could use it to scale up a, um, a shape or distort it, you know, if I want to kind of smidge it around like that. I'm going to undo that. Or what I want to do now is go to the tool underneath it, which is the gradient transform tool. So this allows me to change the gradient, whoops, and it's very, I'm sorry, I hit the scroll wheel on the mouse, but here you can see it gives me this, on this side, it gives me this arrow, and it gives me this little circle. Now the circle is what you would do if you use, if you wanted to change the direction. So I can rotate the gradient. So now blue is at the top and green's at the bottom. I'm finding it a little hard to see the control, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more. And if you want it to, kind of have more of the gradient in here, just move these up. So move them closer together and that will change how the gradient goes from one end to another. So I'm going to move it down so that it's kind of like that. That's fine. I'm not going to, don't want to do anything more complicated for my background. 